Today I'm talking about how to build a cylindrical filter for your aquarium for less than $10. We start with some 2 inch, you could use 4 inch, whatever. Uh, actually 4 inch, uh, take up a lot of your space in your aquarium, but it would add more filter media. So, got one of those, that was like 9 or $10 for 10 feet of it. But I'm only going to use about a foot, so that's a dollar's worth. These were about, I think, two dollars. And these fittings that I've got on here, I think they were maybe one dollar and then maybe a dollar fifty or two dollars. Not very much. So to get from this point to this point, tap a little hole right in the center just to be a guide for this sucker. It's in millimeters instead of inches. I bought this in Germany, uh, but I didn't really use the the markings on it anyway. Because what I do is I just start real slow, and those markings anyway. That's just that point. Well, this stuff's probably eighth of an inch thick. So an eighth of an inch on one side would be eighteen millimeters, but on the other side it'd be almost twenty. So I want this to be as tight as possible so what I do is just go real slow and then try to screw in and when I wouldn't screw in I just take a little bit more going from inside screwing it from drilling it I guess from this side and then I would drill it from this side to kind of make that hole as even as possible and so I'm sure once I got to the point where I, I couldn't even screw this in by hand I had to use a pair of pliers and so I'm hoping hoping that it will be watertight just from that if not I can use the other half of the brass fitting on the inside to help squish it down from both sides and some Teflon tape I'm not too worried about it right now because I'm just going to submerge this in the tank but if I was using it as an external filter I'd definitely be taking more pains to ensure that it was watertight from the first try. All right, that's stage one. All right, for stage two, we need to determine how long our actual cylinder is gonna be. So you gotta figure from the very tip, the very tip, you know, that adds on, because I want mine to be 16 inches but I've got to subtract from the very tip of the hose to where it's gonna this is where the pipe will stop whenever I fit them together so we have to add a few inches yeah sorry so we're gonna have to add approximately Sorry, I'm going to have to add approximately four inches on each side. So, I want it to be 16 inches. I'm going to have to subtract eight inches. Jeez Louise. So, that means I'm going to cut this about eight inches. I might cut it a little bit longer. And by the way, the reason I have fittings on both sides, because I already have one filter like this. And this is going to be the first stage and then it's going to flow from here out into or probably up since then this is going to be the bigger one. I'm going to put a little hose here, connect that to another a pump. I have a pump going in right here, pushes through. I'll have a little hose coming. A second pump, which will add some strength to pump through my secondary filter, which is actually the one that requires most strength. Because it's going to have carbon and sand in it. So this one's going to be filled mostly with fiber. Uh, well, I guess from like a pillow or a stuffed animal. This, is, this one is going to be to filter out the gunk that you can actually see with the human eye. The second one, which will rest above it, will filter out chemicals and also microscopic stuff. Maybe not necessarily microscopic, but... It'll filter out stuff because I'll have carbon zeolite 
and also about two or three inches of sand, kind of hard packed in one inch. Um, so if you were just going to make one, long, short, whatever, uh, you wouldn't put a hose clamp or a hose fitting here. What you do, like I did on my other one, the exit valve, I just put, drilled a couple holes on each side right here. Um, and then as long as you have the diameter of all your holes accumulated is greater than the diameter of your input, then this won't be a bottleneck. All right, so I'm going to cut this and fit it up and then we'll start stage three. All right, stage three, simple plumbing. Primer is the purple stuff. Hit it on the exterior of here, the interior of here, let that dry. And hit it with the cement. Dries pretty quick. Probably will release toxic chemicals and kill my fish, and I'll never figure out why. I'll get angry. <laughs> but, uh, now we use it for human water pipes I'm sure it'll work for fish tank anyway a uh, quick little side note when you're using a Japanese handsaw use the teeth that are for cutting cross grain I believe these I don't know the more jagged ones not the the more straight ones and I tried using this to cut the PVC jammed up Switch over this, we're great. The samurai carpenter would probably have a heart attack if he, you know, was cutting PVC with a Japanese handsaw. But I love it and it works great. It's the best saw that I have. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and fit these together and we'll go on to the final stages. Alright, so we've got her glued. It's not completely uh, set. But while I'm waiting for that, I'll show a couple things. One, uh, with this two inch pipe, it's going to be a real pain in order to try to put these in there. Now they fit, it's going to be a real pain trying to secure it to get it tight enough to really get a good pinch, which I would assume would help uh, with the uh, being watertight. So, it may be better to build something that you plan on being external, unless you have a huge giant tank. External, and if you use the 4 inch version, you could probably fit a ratchet down in there a lot easier. I'm really hoping this works without having to do that. Um, so anyway, I'm leaving them off right there because it, it's super tight. I, mean, I had to use a, a wrench to get it on there. But anyway, so... In order to, for the filter, like I said, I'm just using this kind of stuff, uh, an old pillow, I don't use it anymore. And I know for a fact this works well because I've used a little bit of it on my other filter. Uh, this will really get all those gunk, like pieces of uneaten food and you know, the little floaties that you can see with the human eye. So I'm just going to jam this whole sucker full of this stuff. And then there will be good. I'll probably finish it out. I don't want this ugly old thing like this in my fish tank. So I'll probably tape off this and then and the other side and then spray paint it black. That's what I did with my other one. And it looked pretty good. Alright, I'll show you the uh, before and after. Alright, so testing phase. I'm going, this is my little drill hand pump I bought in Germany. Uh, cool little side note, when I felt Germany would be mostly a bunch of crazy weirdos. <laughs> but they do have some good ideas every now and then. And one of them is these cool little snaps. This is what they have on their garden hoses. I thought it was great. And you can get them different sizes. So I, I, I thought those were really cool. That was a good idea. So anyway, uh, my hose is floating. So I'm going to use my favorite coffee cup. I love Bratislava. I really do. Um, my sink doesn't hold water very well. This thing does not stop the water from sinking. <laughs> I 
Okay, so I'm gonna fill this. Oh, that made it worse. I'm gonna fill this sink bag up with water, and we'll do the test and see if this thing holds water. Literally. Here we go. Give it a shot. Well, have it. This is something I use for beer making, and I haven't made beer in a long while. Oh, wrong direction. My bad. Let's try it again. No, it was going the right direction the first time. submersible uh, definitely not something I want for an external unless I have a safety tank so there you go I'll paint that and oh, I guess you know I'll show you one more thing here's my tank right now my four-year-old and myself overfeed these fish constantly every day um, we're gonna have to but you can see my old one or my, my original one, not old. Let me come around this side. You can see right there. It works pretty well. I think it's time to clean it. But, um, clean the filter media. Anyway, I'll do a before and after. This is what it looks like before. Not very impressive by any means. We just got this new light. So I might be having an algae bloom. I'm not sure. I've done aquaponics, but I've never done just aquarium. So I'm learning as I go here. All right, well, I'll do a, a quick filter and run it for a little while and see what we see. See if it makes a big difference. I think it will, because if you look closely, there's a lot of visible particles floating around in there. I think I can get all those out. Anyway. We'll see. Once when I was a child, I got a giant jawbreaker stuck in my mouth. Shoved it in there, couldn't get it out. One of my favorite things to do is bite off more than I can chew. All right, so here's the fish tank after 15 minutes with the filter. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, as we were filtering, we realized that our problem was much worse than we than had originally thought, and we had old, we'd been overfeeding our fish way too much, and we had just loads and loads. We realized it would just take forever to filter out, even with a super good filter. Um, so we ended up just doing a complete water change. Cleaning, using, taking it, dumping it all out, cleaning the gravel with the hose, and then starting fresh. But anyway, here's the final product. Um, eventually, I'm gonna stack the two. This is the original one, but I'm gonna stack the two, and I'll have one pump going in, as you like, you see right there. Then I'll have. A hose coming up and around and then put the other uh, other filter just sitting on top eventually oh and actually I should say I'll have the hose come out go into another pump and then the second pump will push it through the second tube um, eventually though we're going to have a secondary tank that's out of sight and have the filters in there so you wouldn't see anything but an intake and a, and a return uh, we wouldn't 
but eventually we won't be using the filters inside the main fish tank but that's that's the final stage but for right now over on this side it doesn't really interfere too much that's why i painted it black it doesn't really interfere too much with the look of the tank but there you have it cheap tank or a cheap filter less than 10 bucks i just use I just use fiber from like a, a pillow or a stuffed animal, a little bit of carbon, and a little bit of sand. I actually decreased the amount of sand in probably about one inch or less, probably about one inch, because the sand's so hard packed, which makes a good filter. It also makes it hard for this type of motor uh, to push through. So there you go. That's how you make your own aquarium filter for cheap take it easy